setting up a travel watercolor palette can be a little tricky sometimes. What colors do you put in? In the field, it could be in your backyard. You don't want to run inside. You don't want to go grab your paints and try and figure out which color you need to grab. You want everything with you. And so today, I'm going to show you four different methods on how to set up your watercolor palette for travel. Illustrations by Pete. The first way is going to be very simple because most of the work is done for you. The second way is going to be fairly simple, very reliable, it's a proven method, but it's a little boring. The third way is going to be one of my favorite ways, and I'll show you how to reduce and pick things that lend to more creativity in what you're painting. And if you watch till the end, you'll see the fourth way which is the smart way to set up your palette. Let's get into it. The first way is a purchased set. Holbein has decided that these 18 colors are a good color combination to go in any kind of watercolor kit. And they're great paints. I love Holbein watercolor paints. They are wonderful. But this, it's not very interesting. You're using someone else's color palette. I suggest you pick your own colors and arrange them the way that you like to use them and go from there. Here's the second option. It's called a split primary palette or a mixing palette or a modern palette, however you want to look at that. But I just want you to look at these six colors here. So you have your cool and warm yellow, cool and warm red, and cool and warm blue. On this palette, just with the six colors, if that's all you chose to use, you'd be able to mix every color that you'd want to mix it would just take you a lot of time. And here's why I don't like this. Yes, you can just pick the primaries and mix all your colors. That is not a problem. The problem comes in when you are mixing more than you are painting. And that happens a lot with a palette like this. Now let's get into the third way to do things. So this is where it gets a little interesting. Here I'm going to pick in rounds. I have some yellows here, I have some reds here, and I have a couple blues here. And what I'm going to do is pick three primaries from this list. I have one listed here. Now this is a great color. It's a uh, new gamboge. I paint a lot of landscapes, so I use this color a lot. This is the Quin Gold. This is the original formula and I don't want to use it up. So I usually don't put it on a palette unless I absolutely need it. I'll use it on a finished piece before I'll use it on a sketch. Then you have Mars Yellow, which is a great yellow ochre color, but it's a lot more transparent. It's a little bit more of an earth color for me. Nicolazzo Yellow is a great color and it was tough to pick between these. The only reason that I went this way is because it does have that little bit of orange in it. In this case, New Gambo is clearly the winner for me. If I move over to the reds, Quinn Red is uh, pretty red in the mass tone and it gets kind of pinkish. This is Pearly Maroon. It's a great red. It's a, it mixes a little bit more like a warm red. The Pearly and Violet, that's my go-to red. Typically, I know it looks a little bit more purple here, but when you have it in a mix, when you're trying to use it with something else, you can clearly see that that's the red on your palette. Keep in mind, this is going to be a little bit more challenging because my yellow is not exactly a yellow. My red is not exactly a red, but my blue will definitely be a blue. So it's tough to pick between these two because Thalo Blue is one that I go to all the time. It's transparent and mixes well, makes great greens. To get that light sky during the day, I like to use this. If I need to knock it down a little bit, I can do that with some of the other colors. This is going to be my blue. This is round one. This would fit 12 pans, 12 full pans. You can get the smaller version of this that fits 12 half pans. I like full pans, so let's say I'm gonna fill this. That's the space I'm gonna give myself. I already have my three colors picked out here. Let's go on to round two. All right, so we're gonna call round two primaries and secondaries. There were a couple of primaries that I left out that I really want to include. The first one that I want to include is this mine dark blue. It's one of my favorite colors. I use it for a ton of different things. I would like to include that. Next, I'm going to include transparent pyrrole orange. This is the original formula or the older formula. So this is much more red. This is great if you're painting any kind of foliage or flowers, anything that's orange, this color will go very, very light or very, very dark. Here's another orange that I absolutely love. It's quinacridone burnt orange. That is kind of earthy. You can also substitute it for something like a 
burnt sienna and just add a little bit more color into it and tone it down, tone it one way or the other. But this is a nice color. Sap green, I use a ton of it. This again is the original formula. I hate using it up, but I just can't stop using it. Another green that I really like is Jadeite Genuine. Now, Jadeite Genuine is a beautiful color. It's granulating. As the pigment starts to settle out, it kind of adds its own shadows. Another color I'm going to try and squeeze on the edge here is the one that I cannot live without. That is Perylene Green. And that is another one of my favorites. The perylene colors are absolutely gorgeous. It's a very dark color. It's a very beautiful color. Okay, I think that's enough for round two. Remember, I only have 12 spots. Right now, three of those spots are filled. So I'm going to add number four here. I definitely want this color on my palette. I'm gonna throw one more color in here because I forgot to bring it over from the last round. And that is the perylene maroon. If you need a deep dark red, this is the one to get. Okay. Now in round two, I'm only going to pick three colors, so I've picked four. I'm definitely going to pick here number five. And then I'm going to go ahead and pick the Perylene Green as number six. Now that doesn't mean that I can't use any of these colors in the next round. Absolutely can, and I absolutely will. In round three, I'm going to pick some earth colors. So this is Pimentite Genuine. It's a beautiful color. It's a nice brown with a little bit of a red in it. Granulates very nicely, and I use it for all sorts of things. It's nice to use for bark because it granulates out and, again, makes its own texture. This is environmentally friendly brown iron oxide. Again, very nice color, granulates wonderfully. The texture coming out in here is beautiful. This has a little bit more of a yellow hue to it. This is a little bit more of a reddish hue. Once again, I'm going to add my Mars yellow. And you can see how yellow this looks when you put it next to some of the other earth colors. Next to a bright yellow, it'll look more brown. But next to darker colors, it looks very yellow. Well, what I'm going to do is narrow this down by two. So I'm going to pick, this will be my number seven. And this will be my number eight. For round four, let's look at the darks and the lights. One of my favorites is Payne's Blue Gray. It gets almost black. I actually use it for a black because when the light hits it, it turns more bluish. So it doesn't look like an unnatural black. Next, I took this off my palette for a while and I regretted it. Now I know you're gonna say, that's an earth tone, and it is. And it's used as more of a tinting color for me. I almost never use it by itself. Another one that I like is Lunar Black, and it is a beautiful granulating color, and it adds granulation to any color it's with. Here it is. I'm going to mix it with a little bit of the Mars Yellow. And you can definitely see that Mars Yellow coming through, but you can also see that granulation take place where it's adding that black in there. Mix it with the Nickel Azo Yellow, same thing. That bright yellow still comes through, but you have that granulation. And every palette that I have, watercolor or gouache, will have titanium white gouache on it. It really is one of the most useful tools you can have. For example, here's a perylene green with a little bit of titanium white. Now that green looks pretty flat. If you just add the perylene green next to it, You see that all it's done is lighten it up just a little bit. The other way that I will use white gouache is sometimes I will go ahead and put it down on the page first. Here's an example of two thumbnails I did. There's Now this is zinc white here. I did the titanium white down here. I did not put the thumbnails here yet. But even just with the zinc white, as you paint over it, it blends all of the colors behind it, and I really like how it appears. So here's a little bit tighter shot, and you can see that that gray just kind of blends right into that blue. So I have eight. I only get 12, so I will do nine, 10, 
and 11. All right, through the whole process, we've been looking at colors that we really like in each category, but this last category we're going to title Can't Live Without. Very simple. We have the colors here. This is my palette right here, including white. This is, these are the colors that I'm going to use. What other colors do I really love? Well, these down here, and I didn't include them in the palette. I have a transparent pyrrole orange. I have a Quinn burnt orange. I have the Nicolazzo yellow, the Jadeite genuine, and I have the perline maroon. Now, if I look at it practically, I have multiple greens in here. I have multiple ways of making green in here. So I know that I can live without this green, even though I love it. I'll show you later on how we can correct this if I really want to use that color. But for now, let's get rid of that green. Then we have the oranges here. Well, I don't have a strong orange, but I do have some earth colors. But when it comes down to it, I also don't have a bright red. And that's something that, although I don't like very warm reds, this red right here is deep and dark. I'm going to take a little bit of Mars Yellow. Then I'm going to take some of the Perlene Maroon and see what kind of an orange I can come up with. And that looks pretty close. Not bad. Which means I might not need an orange after all. That'll get rid of these two. So we have so far the green. And those two oranges are gone if I pick this color here. But what about this yellow? Painted out, it gets a very, very bright but so does this. This gets very bright at the bottom here as it's painted out, almost like a regular yellow. I think I can go without this one, so I'm going to go ahead and pick this Perlene Maroon as the color that I absolutely cannot live without. I love all these colors, but I could only pick 12. That's all the room I had on my palette. So I'm gonna finish it out with Perlene Maroon. Okay, now you can duplicate this as many times as you want to come up with the palette you want. And here's what you know. If you go through any of the other steps, any of these other steps, and you say, I cannot live without that color, leave it on your palette. It's not a big deal. And I'm gonna show you why with the smart way to pick a palette. Make sure you consider what book you're going to be using when you go somewhere. Typically, I carry something smaller, five by eight. When I carry this book, I like to be able to hold it in my hand like this. Have the watercolor palette here and paint here. This is too big. I'm probably not gonna take this anywhere. The way that I hold these is like this. That also allows me to grab the book. This palette is so big that I cannot hold the book and paint at the same time. The smart way to pick a palette, pick something that you think is okay to travel with. Now look, don't go ridiculous on me. Today everyone's getting smaller and smaller with their watercolor palettes. Altoid tins and, uh, and mini Altoid tins. Pretty soon, this is going to be their whole palette. Because you know, they like to stick it behind their ear when they go out somewhere. But if you wanna have one of those micro palettes, go right ahead, do the same thing. Just pick the colors you wanna pick. In that case, you're probably only gonna pick your primaries and be done. But do whatever you want to do. That's fine. I don't like to do that because if I only had the primaries, I'd have to mix every other color. This is an example of one that I did just with the three primaries. Got everything done that I wanted to get done here. But I prefer to have more colors available whenever I paint. Instead of using this, I may go out with this. This is my main palette. Here's another palette. Might use something like this. This is a little... Derwent uh, pencil case, much, much thinner than this one here, much thinner. Also, this just folds underneath, and I can just hold it like that. Plenty of pans will fit in here, any way that I want to put them, but they're not going to stay in. On all of my watercolor pans, I put a little magnet on the bottom. So now, I want to put that in there, and it doesn't fall out. This is how you do this the smart way. I can put whatever colors I want in here. I can even go a little bit smaller. You can spray paint the inside here so you have a little mixing palette if you want. It holds full pans, just like that. 
And as I want to do things and change up my palette, it's very simple. I keep a master palette here, and as I want the colors that I'm going to travel with, I just pop them out of that palette, and I stick them right in here. Now I can travel with these. They don't come out. Now why is this smarter? Because I can use this palette for a while. When I'm done with using this palette, if I notice that I'm pulling one color more than another color, or I'm not touching one of these colors, or I wish I had another color, I can take one of the colors I'm not using, swap it out, no problem, from my master palette. My mistake was buying a ton of palettes just like this. Now these palettes are praised because there's a ton of mixing area, the angle uh, wells lets the water run in, you can just kind of pull it off into the mixing area. People love that about them. But what they can't do is switch out these colors. You can't change them out. Once you put them in there, you're stuck with it. And if I don't like the setup, I never pull this palette out. Because it has this Hansa Yellow Light that I never use. And because it has this Quinn Rose that I never use. And because it has the French Ultramarine that I never use. Because it has so many colors that I never use, I never pull this palette out. I would rather just be able to pull the palette out that has the colors in it that I want, and if I want to change one out, I just change it out. That's why palettes like these are useful. I think this is the smart way to do it. If you want to get your colors, put them in these pans, hold them somewhere, and when you go traveling, take out your travel palette, fill it up with the colors you want to fill it up with. And if you find you're not using something, just swap it out. My question of the day is very simple. What color can you not live without? Or colors. Maybe there's multiple ones that you need to have on every palette that you make. Please leave that comment down below. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye.